I'm Alex. And I'm Teddy. And I'm Spencer. And we are the Button Mappers. Hey, the Button Mappers. <laughs> What's up, boys? Ready for another map out? Sonic boy, no, no, we're no, we're going with the we're going with the American intro, boy. Teddy, did you know that? If you're strong, you can fly. You can reach the other side of the Rambo. Oh, Alex, I didn't hear you there. You know why? It's all right. Take a chance because there is no circumstance that you can't handle when you use your mind. Alex. Sonic boom, Sonic boom, <laughs> Sonic. He's the reason. Trouble keeps you running faster. Sonic boom, Sonic boom. So- Save the planet from disaster. It's the Sonic CD. What? This is the uh, beginning of our long series of Sega CD map outs. Is it? <laughs> no, it's probably. This was for this the Sonic probably, playlist. This will probably be the only Sonic the Sega CD game we map out. <laughs> That's insane. We're doing a Sega CD game. We don't even own one. Woo! You... I'm, no. I'm proud, though. I'm very proud. I have a 32X before a CD. And I think it's you because you sent it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sonic CD. I was just listening to it because it's a C- <laughs> um, No, the Sega CD is a console. It's actually it? an add-on. Yeah, it's a console <laughs> add-on <laughs> for the um, Sega Genosis. Have you ever been interested in owning a Sega CD? Oh, absolutely. It's just finding one that's decently priced and working order. Yeah. I'd be interested in owning one, uh, but to be honest, I think S- Sonic CD is probably one of the major reasons to own one. Oh, absolutely. With that being said, there's multiple ways to play Sonic CD. What are some of the ways you've gotten to experience it over well, the years? Well, the, the first way I got to play it, which I think is the most popular way, I would say, for a while, is the Sonic Gems collection on the um, Sega... Uh, sorry, on the Sega... On the, on the Sega GameCube, on the Nintendo GameCube, the Sega GameCube... <laughs> <laughs> the Gems Collections one. They also did a PC port of this game prior to that. They, you know, like around the same time as the CD release. And, and, there was a uh, 2011 mobile port that also got put onto um, Steam, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360, which is the way we are playing it. Mm. And I, I have the, the Jams collection too. Yeah, the Jams. Sonic walks into a jam. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I I mean, I think the access for the game is kind of, if you're not a PC player, it's not easy to come by. I guess PS3, you could get a PS3 and download it that way. Xbox 360 as well. Oh, Xbox 360, okay. Yeah. But then, like, my thing is, like, you're playing with kind of a controller. It's not really suited to playing Sonic. 
Yeah, you're right. The PS3 is way to go because that console has a pseudo D pad. Yeah, and I mean, I have the Gems Collection, but like playing with the GameCube controller is nah. kind of iffy. I can I can manage it, but if it's your first time playing it, I would say uh, Steam. It's got you know good controller uh, well, accessibility. Plus, this version, the 2011 version, was the redone version. Which adds both the American and Japanese soundtracks because they're both different, um, both pretty good though. So pick, pick your poison there. And also, uh, it adds Tails as a playable character. It also changes the original version. Um, they messed up the spin dash. It was a little slower in the original version, um, so they changed the startup to be normal. It's also, it's also widescreen and it's just all around runs better. <laughs> get it runs better uh <laughs> i noticed uh too when i was playing on the gamecube via the gems collection the spin dash was kind of messed up so they ported that old one over too yeah so um, so the 2011 version fixed that so the, the spin dash isn't as wonky <laughs> this game has some interesting features i think uh notably there's like i don't know what you call this but when you push up on the d-pad and then like kind of charge your run sonic spins his feet that is the called? super peel out what was the the point of adding? It's that? faster than a spin dash. You can you can just do that and, and then let go when it launches you. And only a few other games have done that. Um, Sonic Chaos, Sonic Triple Trouble, and Sonic um, Blast on Game Gear. Those games have that. But this is the only time a main Sonic title has ever featured the Super Peel Out. Mm. I personally liked it. I, I used it a lot during my playthroughs. It looks cool, but honestly, like if they didn't nerf the spin dash, it wouldn't really serve a purpose. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about just some of the oddities of this game. Aside from just accessibility, it's a bizarre game. What's your experience with Sonic CD? Uh, like I said, the first time I ever played it was the Gems Collection, and at this point, I I had heard about it for years. Um, it, like anytime anybody, like say pre like two thousand nine, would talk about it online, it was always like hailed as being the greatest Sonic game, the best Sonic game, you know. And for me, it was like, oh, that must be true. Because it's like the one 2D Sonic game, you know, outside of like Knuckles Chaotix that I can't get my hands on, you know? So finally I did track down a copy of the Gems Collection uh, and I played it that way. And going into it, like if you're going into the game thinking that it's already going to be the best Sonic game, it's sort of setting yourself up for failure. <laughs> Like it's, I remember I downloaded this on the PC and I'm not a PC gamer. Remember this. This was like five, six years ago because I had heard something similar. I was like, I, you know, people were saying, oh, Sonic CD. It's like, oh, it, it's so crazy. It's, it's a great game. And I played it and I was like, what the hell did I just play? <laughs> well, Sonic CD has an interesting history, too, because after um, the first Sonic game, there was two different development teams. The American team, which was not led by Yuji Naka, I, I believe, they made Sonic 2. And then the other team led by Yuji Naka in, in Japan, they made Sonic CD. So in a way, Sonic CD is sort of a pseudo sequel to Sonic 1 in a sense. And you can kind of feel that as you're playing it. So. <laughs> My thing about it is when I first played it, I didn't understand what the hell was up with all the signposts. Uh, well, to explain um, the game's mechanics, we might have to explain the setup for the game. Do you think, you think it's kind of tradition in, uh, into that? I think that's important before we start mapping it out, because I think that's going to direct some of the conversation with stages. Yeah. Do you mind if I try uh, take my take the lead on that one, and then you can correct me if I kind of get yes, anything backwards? Yes, I'd be more than happy. Go ahead. So while I, I can't really fill you in on the story with the mechanics, I can tell you that every stage has signposts that say either uh, past or future, and they're spruced throughout the stage. The point of Sonic CD, if you want to get the true ending, is to go back in time to the past and to destroy the robot generators that Robotnik leaves on every stage and as well as the metal sonic projectors there's two things you don't actually have to destroy the metal sonic projectors to get the good ending uh, but it is a nice little feature because it actually destroys all the uh, enemies on the stage the way that you teleport is by running past the signpost you acquire that that time frame is either past or future 
and then you have to build up enough momentum and run at sonic speed in order to go to that time zone but you have to do it for like a good 10 or 15 second sprint and with some of the stages it can be very difficult to maneuver that another thing that's kind of complicated is that there's almost no point to go to the future a lot of times those signs serve to distract you and that's how i understand the, that's how i came to understand the way that the uh, game plays i think it was very intimidating for me the first few times i played it but once i understood that concept uh, it made more sense to me and there's actually a story reason for that too do tell so the sonic cd um is about sonic coming across a, a mysterious planet called little planet it appears once every whatever years it's a mysterious place where time flows freely Whenever Sonic, what you see is in the, the the opening FMV, whenever Sonic approaches Little Planet, it's been chained up and uh, has like a metal shell that uh, Eggman has encased it in. So um, what Eggman is doing, he's, he's going back in time, planting the robot generators to create a bad future and ultimately control um, Little Planet so that he can get the time stones and control time. That's, that's his ultimate goal. Um, also, you meet you meet a, a cute little character, and we'll talk about her in a minute, I guess. <laughs> that we will. Are you, are you ready to jump in? You want to jump on in? Let's map this game. So, Sonic uh, running up onto uh, Little Planet, his first uh, zone is Palm Tree Panic. Dun, 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 dun. It's a Sonic Yay! game. So it's... <laughs> Yay! It's got to start with a... Uh, grassy happy zone yeah uh, I think this is a nice area to see first off the differences between this and a Genesis Sonic game and second to kind of let you run around and experience the signposts I know most of these green hill zone types are like you know ex get gives you a chance to run around uh, but I think the signposts like this is your chance to really explore that feature Starting the stage, you come across another character, a, a pink hedgehog. It's Amy. Did, Are did you sure know it's Amy? this one? Yeah, I, I believe, I think, right? No, it's the next one. I'm oh, well, I'm fucking wrong. Whatever. <laughs> um, no, wait, no, she's in this zone, isn't she? I believe she's in both. You see her at the beginning of this one. She can, like, hug you, and you can just run past her. She gives you kisses in Collision Chaos. Yeah, she gets... Okay. I... I think you're wait. wrong. <laughs> hold on, wait. No, I'm not. Hold on. Is Amy in Palm Tree Panic? I hope Google's like, what? <laughs> I'm watching a walkthrough. You're wrong. I'm sorry. Well, anyways, continue. No, hold on. It says right here. It says on the character profile wiki, she met her hero in Palm Tree Panic on Little Planet. In the actual stage? Yes. Yeah, she's, no. she's there. She's no, there. No, she's not there. <laughs> she's <laughs> I'm watching it real time. Hold on. You're going to see the video footage <laughs> after the fact, and you're going to be narrating it wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I, we, have, we have to solve this before we can move on. This is important. <laughs> this is not <laughs> important. I know no, she's this in the next one. No, she's very... Well, it sets it up because you don't even know who she is. Um, hold on. If it'll ever load... Palm oh tree God. panic. Palm tree panic. Okay, talk talk a bit about, about palm tree panic. <laughs> okay, so you start the stage, and one of the things that you do is you go off this ramp, and the ramp, like, turns and becomes 3D. It's, like, one of the only times this happens in the game. I thought that was a really cool display of what the Sega CD is able to do, even if you are experiencing this on a different console. Uh, I also like just some of the speed that you're able to build. I think there's like some points, there's one point at which you like run through this kind of uh, mechanical uh, like loop pipe and it actually projects you right out the side of a mountain and you see Sonic's imprint on the wall as he emerges from it. I thought that was a super funny little thing. By comparison to a green hill zone, I think it's it's a little bigger, but it's like just more wide. It kind of feels like it's lacking some of the... Uh, how would you say maybe like features that um, I don't know some of the other games sport you know I think the big push for this stage is just is the time travel 
It's and um, of course like trying to find uh, where the robot projector and hologram projector are. Well, one of the big um, things like when the game the the when you first start the first uh, act of Palm Tree Panic, the fact that like the uh, there's that loop that like goes inward almost like a 3D effect, you know? It's like like in this game I could say this the whole way through. This game's trying to show you the power of a Sega CD. Be it, be it the colors, the backgrounds, the music, uh, this game's trying very hard to justify its own existence. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I just remember that that moment where Sonic like goes 3D for a second. It's like a flashy moment, you know. It's like the only time that happens in the game. Yeah, yeah, it's like that happens. But I don't know. It's just such a memorable moment for me. That's like, I always remembered that because um, it's like, oh, that's a neat effect, you know. But like, yeah, they never use it again. Mm-hmm. Um, Palm Tree Panic is... I don't know. I wasn't really panicking, but, uh... You know, it's... I, I really like the music. I think, like, the fact that the kids cheer in the beginning of the stage is hilarious. And, uh, even when you go back in time, I think you hear that, too. Um, also, it's nice to be able to set up the good future for this one. It just feels very relaxed when you get there to, uh, the Robotnik battle. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this is the... The most push-over Robotnik battle. Oh my gosh! The uh, I don't know if you've heard the uh, the American soundtrack for this, but it's very creepy. What, can you replicate it? It's like uh, there's like okay, so it starts out with like weird mechanical beeps and boops, um, and then like there's some laughing. It's like it's like it's very creepy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think when you get the bad futures, that's like the kind of sounds that you hear too. Yeah. So it's yeah. Nice. Aesthetic. Also, if you get game over in the American version, there's laughing that goes. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> it's very creepy. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. Very hard um, to get game over in this game, but uh, there are some segments that may prove challenging later on. I think even just the mu the boss battle music is funny too because they do this weird kind of sounds. It's like I don't even know what they're saying, but it's like real. No. Okay. Wow. Teddy, <laughs> Teddy, are you, are you ready? I'm gonna blow your fucking mind. You ready? No. Here we go. I want you to click on this video I'm sending you, and I want you to go to 258 timestamp. Oh, you you bastard. Okay. <laughs> I knew I knew it. I knew I, she was there. <laughs> she just hugs you. That's all she does. Wow, I've played it and that's never happened for me. I've yeah, played it a couple times. Yeah. So. She's not at the beginning. How do you get her? She was, she, she's just there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you passed her. Running at solid but, speed. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that. And, and so you beat Amy in this stage. I do. I, do, I, I was like, am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> um, and Amy is. Uh, she has no bearing on on anything really until later on. She, but she is Sonic's self-proclaimed biggest fan and girlfriend. And Sonic's like, you, you know, because he doesn't care about ladies. He's not Mario. Well, he, he there's there's plot points later, but we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's got hearts over her head. It's kind of similar to the next stage. But do you have anything else for Palm Tree Panic? I think it's an inoffensive Sonic stage. and But, you know, it just it has that Green Hill Zone vibe. I agree. I think it's it's not a pushover, like you said. Um, and it is a nice transitioning point to a much different color for the game. Pink. Uh, yeah, some, this one's full of it. Something very thematic that I like is that this this is a collision chaos, and the while the uh, foreground looks very different, the background looks kind of similar to um, Palm Tree Panic, and that's. I think it really works to make you feel like you're all like on one big planet, you know, you're on a little planet. So you're kind of progressing through the areas. You, do you mean like the background? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it still fits the same theme as Palm Tree Panic. Yeah, it's not these crazy leaps, kind of like with Sonic 2 or something. But uh, this stage opens with, with Amy there there by your side and, and you're like, what the heck? And then you run forward you see a little uh, a little spike in the passageway and a little block above it. So you jump up thinking, you know, that's the way you you need to go. And then all of a sudden, this 
this blue robot just bursts through. Oh my god, it's me! <laughs> Metal Sonic! <laughs> it's me, Sonic! Metal! He picks it's up... me, Metal Sonic. <laughs> it's me, Metal Sonic. He picks up Amy and flies away. So now this oh is... Oh no, Amy! <laughs> <laughs> so now this is a rescue mission. <laughs> yeah, the th this one got real. I don't think, you know, it's funny because like Sonic's one through three. I mean, you know, I guess Sonic three, you see cutscenes with Knuckles that and you get a kind of like view of him as a character. He's like this bully. But like here, it's like Amy. It's almost she's like the Knuckles of this game. You know, she's like this the side character with an interesting kind of setup, I guess. Yeah. What do you think of that? I mean, she's once again, she's kind of in inconsequential, but she is like this. um she plays this damsel in distress role that we don't see Sonic do very often, you know? She's like, mm -hmm. you know, save me, you know, and, um, and I'll mention it towards the end, you know, how it kind of subverts it to stay Sonic, but um, I do I do kind of like it because, like, this this is the first time you ever see Metal Sonic. And just, just to go on record, Metal Sonic is my favorite Sonic character. Mm. So... It's I don't know I think it's a cool intro because you see like this blue Sonic looking robot would pick her up and leave and you're like who the hell was that? <laughs> this one the theme music kind of matches the character too. It almost sounds kind of more metallic than you know the palm tree. Du -du 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 -du. This one's good. <laughs> Da -da 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 I'm kind of jarring it, but you know it's a. Uh, thematic it's cool i i like that the the foreground is is like almost in the same kind of texture as amy too when you go back in time it kind of loses that color but it's a cool effect it is um so this stage uh is the start of something i like to call um hold on let me, let me bumper look syndrome bumper syndrome thank you yes um <laughs> and this is something that the game just, uh, look, look, the Sonic CD designers. I get it. They, they they were trying to make big levels with like tons of exploration and stuff. That's what they did. They, you know, did they even like like did the whole time travel thing. Mm. But they just they just put bumpers all over the goddamn place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's springs all over this thing. Uh, I remember distinctly in Act Two how there's a segment underneath. Like if you kind of take the bottom route. And they have these little bubbles. It's almost like a game of, uh, I don't know. I want to say like bubble bobble, but it's not quite that. Well, anyways, you have to keep like, you know, using the spin ball for uh, Sonic to push him up and blow up the things. You don't even have to take that route, but it's just kind of like a nuisance. And I mean, it, it slows down the progression in this stage. It's interesting because like with Sonic CD, I'm not really thinking about going fast most of the time. It's mostly just about like exploring and collecting do you ever play this game to like try and go fast or anything no it's almost impossible <laughs> it's it's very challenging especially if you are trying to go for a completion run yeah it is, this game is very different from the other genesis titles mainly two and three i think it does share some similarities with some areas in one uh but it is very much about exploring and be being able to find the past gates and go back and you know find the robot generators and stuff and um, there for a while, honestly, like when I first played it and not having played, um, pre you know, this game previously and nobody had had ever explained the concept of like the past and stuff to me, I was trying to play it like a normal Sonic game, like it's going fast and I was having an awful time. Mm hmm. Yeah. This one, I mean, like there's just springs all over the place. They're pointing in like different directions and, and sometimes it even just makes the exploration hard. You know, sometimes you may even be near like the robot generator. I mean, it's not called co collision chaos for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do like that kind of tension, though, of, like just like, oh, I'm in the air. Like, you know, where am I going to land? Got to be careful. And it's it's really easy to stock up on rings here, too. This I, w I do also want to point out some similarities here um, throughout the map out, per se. But. In this stage, they have the grasshoppers from Sonic 2 Metropolis, but they're a much more harmless version. Mm -hmm. I wish that Sonic 2 brought in these grasshoppers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's any badniks in this game that really gave me that much trouble. You know? 
Nah, there's there's like only I'd say a few towards the end, but we'll get there. You you said something earlier. You said spinball, and that reminded me of the boss of this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he is. It's spinball. Oh god. <laughs> oh ha ha ha. Uh, man, I, they were like they were going all in on this pinball thing, weren't they? <laughs> it's just a pinball table. Yeah. You just gotta I mean, once it- you get to the top, it's not bad, but. No, the the mechanics, the ability to get up there, the left and right bumpers, it's like you have to go around and up. And yeah. you can't really like a- a- aim it towards the middle. Yeah, but once you get up there, you just bop on Eggman a few times and that's it. I do like one thing the stage that uh, does that makes it apparent too. They have a one-up box on the side. So if you can kind of finesse it, you can get the one-up box. A couple of these boss stages have that, which is why I said earlier it's so hard to game over because these one-ups are everywhere. And also the number of rings you can get. I've, like by the end of a, a standard playthrough, I could have 15, 20 lives. It's not bad. Oh, yeah. This is... Uh, the, this game, the Eggman battles are... <laughs> oof, they are pushovers. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one is, is not a favorite by any means. I think it's just a generic one. I think... Uh, what's it called? Sonic 2 did this idea of a Eggman spinball boss better. What do you think? What, with the casino? Yeah, the casino night. Yeah, I would say so. That one's actually pretty fun if you know what you're doing. This mm-hmm. one, yeah, this one's just kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, uh, we go to oh my god, what is is this Labyrinth Zone? No, it's Tidal Tempest. This is like Labyrinth Zone if they realize their mistakes. <laughs> yeah, this is a relatively benign Labyrinth Zone. Because uh, like, and it, it scared me the first time I ever played this because it started up and it looks eerily similar to Labyrinth Zone, like with the water and the the ruins and that like that kind of design. And I'm like, no, no, no. But it's Tidal, Tidal Tempest, and it's really not that bad. Yeah, you can tell it's more calm too. The music is kind of it sets this pace. I think I think it has like the kind of antiquated feel of Labyrinth Zone, and it works really well between going back in time as well. Um, as far as keeping that kind of theme. Um, I don't know how well it really transitions from Collision Chaos, but it it's fine. It really doesn't do that well, but it, yeah, it is fine. Like I said, I, I think, and we've talked about this before, I think these kind of stages do work better er, earlier on in the Sonic games um, because they mm-hmm. kind of fit that like natural theme, you know? Mm. Um there's no problems with air bubbles here because there's so many opportunities to spring above the water. And Yeah, and also this stage, much like Labyrinth Zone, is not really built for speed, but I never felt annoyed like Labyrinth Zone. Like, I still had fun platforming. Only thing that annoyed me was the first time I tried to go for that true ending here, it put me in a box. It put, like, when I oh, went, yeah. time traveled, I ended up in, like, a, a secluded square of the screen. I remember that because you were like, what do I do? And I was like, I've never seen this happen before. Apparently, that's not one of the only glitches that can happen. You can uh, glitch time travel in one of the future stages and end up um, falling in in like a pit, in a bottomless pit. Future. That's what the sign says. <laughs> when you pass it. <laughs> future. <laughs> Uh, relatively benign. I don't have any issues with Tidal Tempest, but I don't think it's that memorable. How would you compare it to some of the future uh, water stages and Labyrinth, for that matter? I, I mean, it's no Hydro City Zone. No, not at all. Um, but I don't know if it's fair to compare it to Sonic Three either. It's, pro- it's probably better than the one in Sonic Two. What is that one? Um, Aztec. Ruins, aquatic Aztec ruins, so. <laughs> aquatic ruin. Could you there imagine you that? The, like Sonic meets the Aztecs. <laughs> Sonic Jones fly, goes to the Aztec temple. It's the temple of the sun god. We must sacrifice him. Rip out his heart. It is I, Sonic. <laughs> I have come to claim your temple. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go fast. <laughs> 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 Gotta go fast. <laughs> Sonic <Jones. laughs> uh, uh Tidal Tempest. Uh, it's all right. What was the boss here? Oh, you just chase Eggman until, like, for the first part, right? Yeah. This is one of the worst Eggman chases. Oh, I've yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. You just got to chase him. And then after you chase him, he goes to this little section where he... Genius idea, Eggman. Really brilliant one here. He 
puts bubbles around himself. Mm. Woo! Damn, how am I going to beat those bubbles? Guess you got to bop them. <laughs> what a stupid idea. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. Like, like, this is the game where Eggman was, like, off of his meds. <laughs> you, know? you know what, though? It's this. It's very similar to the Metropolis uh, Eggman, where he surrounds himself with clones of himself. Yeah, but that one, I think, I think like, even even if it does work, like, the same way mechanically, the clones look more threatening than Bubbles. And, and they are. They're very challenging. Yeah, the Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's favorite Powerpuff. <laughs> so, um, anything else to say about Title Tempest? Well, it's, it's Title. It's got uh, a great title. Uh, my favorite Atari game, Tempest. <laughs> I got a high score. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> um, next, we go to Quartz Quadrant. They can't all be gems, but this one is uh, made of quartz. This one is neat. I think it does follow up from Title Temp as well with the uh, the crystals and stuff. It does still kind of look cavish. Yeah, but, and almost mystic cavish. But there, no, but there's a, <laughs> but there's some um, mechanical elements here. Mo more notably, they introduce these conveyor belts in this stage. Wow. With these little switches, you can switch the direction of the conveyor belt. That's pretty cool, I think. I don't know how much it really added to the stage. Well, I th yeah, but it does does kind of add to some of the platforming challenges when you need to have you know have a thing go a certain way and yeah, I don't know. Like I, I I've had points in this stage where I've flipped the switch the wrong way, you know, and then I've like oh shit, I need to go back and hit it again, and you know, trying to I don't know. Mm. Like I don't think it does add too much, but I don't know. I think it is kind of a neat mechanic. I do like how this one kind of transitions out of the stage too. Halfway through, you end up like in kind of the out outdoors or it's like you see vantages from outside i don't know how well the like the cave or this kind of like wall texture really looks but i, I as you said I, I think it does come out of uh tidal tempest nicely yeah and this is like i think this is the point in the game where you realize that they just they've gone fucking nuts with the colors like it's like you know it's like the the first stage okay it looks pretty you know green and and the second one okay this is wacky but we'll keep going T title tempest was like relatively tame with its mm. colors this one's fucking like light blue for the ground <laughs> and you're like mm. what is happening uh and <laughs> it's you know and it's just where they were trying to show off that you know how much color the cd could put on screen at one time you know mm. At least that's what I notice when I'm playing. I especially notice that with the collision chaos, but uh, yeah, I think this one just suffers a bit of like, not lack of identity, but it's just it, maybe it just lacks some personality. Yeah, it does. Um, when when the key selling point is is conveyor belts. <laughs> yeah, know, there are some swirly tubes. Some. Yeah, some swirly tubes, but yeah, it it's a it's it's a weak stage. Um, what what was the boss here? I don't remember. That really is uh, quite telling. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can remember. Oh my gosh, I liked this boss. This is a cool one. It's a cool yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot which because this game has like some of the shittiest bosses, but this is like actually one of the cooler ones. So the principle here is not hitting Eggman. It's he actually drops his his little thing on the conveyor belt. I don't know, like this machine that he's sitting in. Almost like a Jigglypuff in one of those Pokemon Stadium mini games, um, and as Sonic, you have to run on the conveyor belt and cause his machine to melt into the conveyor belt as you're running super speed. Yes, <laughs> and um, yeah, I I like the I don't know. It just looks cool to like run really fast and have it get shorter and shorter. You know, you could tell Eggman's like getting nervous in there. You know, and again, Eggman was off his meds this game. He just kind of is. <laughs> His creations weren't weren't up to par. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too challenging, but it was it was a neat battle. I'll give it that, especially compared to like what we have here. Um, but again, I think uh, overall, this this is a very lackluster area. 
yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hear anything about it in future games. I don't see any features that are really brought back unless it's the, it is the conveyor belt, but I'm not really sure. I, I personally like the way conveyor belts were done in Sonic One. You compared it to that before. Um, I don't think this is necessarily a step back. You know, I, I like that they're adjustable, but I mean, at, at the end of the day, meh, meh, meh. <laughs> So I guess we'll that be, next one though. Uh, it's a, it's wacky. Day what? And it's a walkway. No, it's not. It's wacky walkway. Wacky wacky workbench. I was like, what? Oh, <laughs> wacky. Walk me, me and my old age. Wacky walkway. Sonic's like, I'm just gonna walk through this age. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic walks into a workbench. <laughs> <laughs> wacky workbench. Um, do you want to hear the sound of my nightmares? Go for it. Brr. <laughs> That's what happens when you touch the fucking floor in the stage. <laughs> you know what though? This is where the the Sonic Mania chemical plant jumps came from. Oh yeah, yeah. And I don't, you know, I'm I'm gonna say like I can poke fun at it and say that the the main concept of this stage is annoying. The fact that all the the floor is bouncy for the whole stage. Mm -hmm. Like it, there can be points where it can get a little annoying um mm. and it, it it kind of like makes you want to stay on the you know on the high roads and stuff uh but i do think it's a unique and fun idea for a stage absolutely the first time i played it i hated it i thought like what is this this is not sonic i'm supposed to be able to run and here it is just pushing me up but um i think once you learn where things are you can kind of manipulate a little better i mean there's still a couple points where it slows you down uh but i i genuinely liked how large the stage was it was awesome building up speed getting one of those pass signs and then using it off of the uh the workbenches <laughs> <laughs> and um i i don't know i think generally generally it was a, a cool uh principle or principle uh concept they also took the like mine looking batteries and put them in flying battery oh yeah you're right so Sonic CD is uh, making waves. Making waves. Uh, yeah, like I said, it, and I'm not saying because I know there's people that hate the stage. I'm not saying that it can't or won't be annoying, but I, I'm saying that like overall, I think it's a fun idea. I mean, clearly they thought so. They put several of these things in other games. I think these these like kind of purple spinny wheels come back too. Oh, you're talking about like, the little platforms? There's little platforms that you stand on that spin you. I think that comes back in Sonic and Knuckles, but then there's also um, these purple spheres that if you go in, it'll spin you around and then you release. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. They actually took that from Sonic 1 in Scrap Brain, and they just applied uh, it in a different kind of yeah, color field. Yeah, too. they did. So, Wacky Workbench, I guess, it, it's... Although you may not see the stage in a lot of Sonic games, I think uh, a lot of these concepts are recycled in different ways. It's, uh, it's got a boss fight. How about it? Um, I don't know. I don't... You know, I want to like this one. It's been done better. Yeah, because I mean, like, the, the concept is that, like, you know, where the whole level has been bouncy, the fights bouncy and there's um things you have to like like pieces of like debris you have to stand on to jump up to the next area that eggman's at and it's sort of it's it's challenging but i don't know it's sort of fun but it can be really annoying when you fall the way back down and have to climb back up the only hole is in the middle though and i think it's relatively straightforward i don't think there's much that's that's too hard to grasp here i mean you know for that matter it's I mean, fine for a Sonic boss or whatever. But I think I've seen something like this done in like, maybe Castlevania Bloodlines or something where uh, you have to use like platforms oh, in God. an interesting way. I'm not sure. I'm, maybe I'm misremembering If, if I start playing that game and I hear, burp, I'm just turning it off. You're not going to hear, burp. <laughs> <laughs> burp. Ah! <laughs> Skeletons in the air. <laughs> 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 Wacky. Wow. <laughs> Wacky Castlevania. <laughs> <laughs> Wacky Vania. <laughs> Uh, could you imagine like 
the like it's like oh man this is gonna be a great scary stage <laughs> getting, getting launched hi i'm simon <laughs> and this is my workbench <laughs> um anything else to say about wacky workbench i mean it's, it's good for a wacky time Move other on. than that no moving on up to uh probably the most memorable stage of the game Starlight Speedway. My favorite uh, zone from Act One, Starlight Zone. From game, yeah, first game. Yeah, this game, this stage is very Sonic. <laughs> I mean, clearly people think so too, because like this is the one, I'm pretty sure, or one of two stages that made it back to Sonic Mania. Yeah, from one Sonic of two. CD. Yeah, and the other one's coming up. What are some of the things that make this characteristic of Sonic? Uh, for one, just how windy and loopy it is. I think that's one. Um, also, there's points where you have to, like, navigate the speed sections to, like, pick the right pathways. And I think that's, that it's, it keeps the game fast and also challenging, in a way. I don't know. I like that part. Mm. There's a lot of uh, momentum sections, you know, where yeah. it'll just speed you along. You can literally see fire underneath Sonic's, uh, you know, shoes. And it's it also kind of puts you in loops. You have to be cognizant of how fast you're going. Maybe you'll have to push right in a certain direction if you end up in a spring in a bumper section because it's got you enclosed and it'll keep pushing you back and forth. A uh, great opportunity to build up speed to time travel. And I think, like you said, it's very memorable. It has elements that are brought back in the Sonic Mania stage. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is the Sonic Mania stage that this that is based on this one even titled Stardust Speedway? It is. It is? Okay. Yeah. They added, remember that one, they added, like, on Act 2, they added the plants. Mm -hmm. Where they, like, grow and you can, like, jump on their leaves and stuff. Which is a neat mechanic. I think this one is more simple and to the point. But, I mean, we'll get there when we get to Mania. But in, in general, I really like how this one was done. But it, it did take some getting used to. Um, I did feel like I was going back and forth in some sections. But, I mean, you know, that's how it is with sometimes your first time playing Sonic. Yes, I appreciate yes. them taking a new approach here. It's me, Sonic. <laughs> it started a speedway. It's, it's me, your son, Nick. I think of all the stages, this, this stage, maybe, maybe Palm Tree Panic to an extent, but this stage really represents, like, Sonic like what Sonic's gameplay is, you know, mm. um, more so than the last few stages we've looked at. <laughs> mm. um. This one has the funky music too. Yeah, you know, da 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 da. Get it? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I love that that theme too, and uh, I I attribute that to um, the third act of this zone. Mm, that one's unforgettable for sure. Oof. Uh, did you know what you were doing the first time you played this? Um. Well, I saw the one-up box, and I was like, how do I get up there? So, I, you know, you have to kind of go backwards and spring up there. And then, as you get towards the end, Amy's being held hostage. And there he is. It's Metal Sonic. Yeah. And... You can't do anything at first. You have to wait for Eggman to go back and forth, and then he drops down the laser, and then suddenly it becomes a race. <laughs> it's a race. <laughs> it's a race. To see who's the fastest. <laughs> yeah. So, and Sonic, Metal Sonic is cheating. Metal Sonic's scary, because he is just as fast as Sonic. And he'll electrocute himself. Yes. So, you know, if, if he happens to, to run into you, or vice versa... You know, it, it causes you damage, you lose the rings, and then uh, Eggman's chasing you the whole time with the uh, laser beam. Oh, yeah. Say, so not only are, are you racing, but Eggman is destroying the stage behind you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you get ahead of Metal Sonic, yeah. he comes chasing after you like a super Sonic. Yeah, super metal he does Sonic. that, like, charge move, right? He goes, <laughs> flies through the air. Have you ever been able to do this one with no damage? Yes. It's one of the, the PC achievements, so, I mean, I, I haven't done it yet, but... I'm interested to try. It's a, uh, I've this is like, I think the 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 like flagship standout 
moment from this game that's been recreated in other Sonic titles and stuff. You know, they did a version of it in uh, Mania. There's a version of it in Generations. Like, this is, like, the the standout thing. Like, even on the cover, like, the the artwork for this game always shows, like, Sonic and Metal Sonic, like, head, you know, head-to-head. And this is kind of, like, that, that rivalry, you know? Mm-hmm. It's been building up to it this whole game. There's been Metal Sonic projectors in each of the stages. You saw Metal Sonic abduct Amy Adams in Collision Chaos. So it was only a matter of time. Yeah, and you know, and that's kind of like one of the cool things about this game as well. We do fight some measly Eggman stuff. Like it's almost like Metal Sonic's the bad guy of this game. <laughs> in a you know, in a mm. sense. Even if he is just a creation. Yes. Even though he comes back in later titles, but <laughs> uh, but very climactic for a Sonic boss battle. I think uh, it's nice to get a, a break from like the typical Eggman too, because those are just this ten- they tend to be generic. I think it almost makes up for all the missed opportunities with the other battles. Oh yeah, I know it's it, it's a great it's it's a great moment, um, and I don't th- I, none of the previous two um, D games that we've looked at have done moments like this per se like that really like the gameplay moments they've done like cinematic moments where they have the characters like like uh trying to communicate with each other like um whenever on you know we talk about sonic and knuckles whenever knuckles was like come on sonic you know he like did a little thing um but like you never actually like fought knuckles or raced against knuckles or anything like like that so i think that's really neat that they were trying something different with this uh, there is Mecha Sonic in Sonic Two, yeah, but it's uh, it's pretty forgettable by comparison. He's literally in a windowed screen, and, and that's it. He's not my boy, Metal Sonic. Mecha Sonic. No, I'm saying, but Mecha Sonic is not my boy, Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic is your boy. Metal Sonic is my boy. That's your boy. Mecha Sonic cannot compare to my boy, Metal Sonic. In a fight between Metal Sonic and Mecha Sonic, Metal Sonic. the winner is clearly. Metal Sonic. He's got such a cool design too. You know, I just... he's blue. He's not like gray. Yeah, he's blue. <laughs> he he looks like a robot Sonic. Like straight up, like if Sonic were just a robot. Like, so this game came out before Sonic Two. Yes. Oh no, no, that's no, no, crazy. No. Wait, I could be wrong. I think they were in development at the same time. I'm not sure which one was released first. Oh okay. Because I was going to say those those battles are like they're completely different, but the character concept is very similar there's the, well and that's not the last time we'll see that um whenever we get around to talking about the game gear titles there's another <laughs> robots version of sonic called silver sonic mm. so uh me- robot sonic's all around everybody <laughs> <laughs> but this is the superior one this is the ones that fans know this is the one that um keeps coming back in sonic titles and is in a ton of Sonic spinoffs. He's in like the most recent spinoff games and everything. He's he's always there. Metal Sonic, my boy. Mm-hmm. Um, he is a lad. If you ever get a chance, Teddy, I don't know if you ever want to. There's a Sonic anime OVA. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. I watched Sonic Boom for a little bit. No, uh, this is from the '90s. It was like an OVA movie, and it follows some themes from CD. One of which being Metal Sonic. And there's some really intense, like, fun anime, like, battle moments between Sonic and Metal Sonic in that movie. And uh, I think that's a lot, like, where my love for the character comes from, because he's very menacing. Like, he's mm. got the like the, the, the bright red eyes, he's just very cold, you know. And mm. So it's, it, it's a very cool movie. Send it my way. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not done yet. Star Wars Speedway was just uh, the lead-up to the final zone. Final zone. Zone of the Enders. Metallic no, Madness. Not this <laughs> Metallic Madness. Another one that they brought back. Just when you thought you didn't get enough metal from Sonic. It's Metallic Madness. This is a this is a good zone. I think so. I think it's a good last zone with exceptions, but conceptually I think and with some of the designs here. Very clever. Um, first off, Tiny Sonic. Yeah, Little Sonic. That that always throws me off guard. You were talking to me on the phone the, the other day while I was playing the stage, and I was like, "Oh, I forgot that there's Tiny Sonic." <laughs> mm-hmm. Which they do bring back in Mania too. I think they bring back this stage in Mania from whatever. Yeah, yeah, they do. 
So I thought that this was a unique pick. There's a couple uh, enemy units that are challenging here. Not the worst, but um, like there's this this scythe, this double pronged scythe that will spin its blades at you, and that can be challenging um, because you have to predict like which side is going. It's, it's pretty obvious, but you still have to be aware of it. Uh, there's some guys with like these little uh, spinny cogs, and you gotta avoid them because they move them up and down. There's those little seesaw type things. That are pretty neat. Hmm. Uh, this one also has the directional loops that you see in Chemical Plant. It, they, I think, it uh, does. Were those in the original Chemical Plant or only in Mania? They were in the original. They were, okay. Um, hold on, I'm going to figure out, because I, I really want to know which game came out first. Okay, Sonic, okay. Sonic 2, you can keep talking. I'm just gonna look it up. Um, I think this one was really challenging, especially the points where you become Tiny Sonic. It happens in uh, stage two. Um, it's just such a different approach for the level. You have to kind of time your jumps a little differently, and then you have to get back to the normal part. It really makes you feel, I guess, just kind of less powerful as Sonic. So, so very unique. Also, um, robot. Hologram Sonics are no more at this point in the game because, um, you know, you, you destroyed Metal Sonic at this point. Um, the robot generators are there, but sometimes they're not. I think if you fully completed the game up to that point, you can uh, you don't have to deal with those. But uh, they're pretty inoffensive. So um, Sonic 2 came out in November of 1992. Okay. Sonic CD, Sonic 2. Sonic, yeah, Sonic CD came out September of 1993, so less than a year apart. Okay. Well. So they're yeah, so they're obviously being being worked on at the same time. Does that affect your appreciation and or understanding of the game any? No, I I, I just I was just curious to know. <laughs> oh okay. Uh, another enemy unit that makes its way back later times, and it's also kind of a cool evolution, is the Robotnik Bomb. They have these oversized ones that are a bit more difficult to dodge uh, their firepower than in Sonic 2. Yes. So it's a bit menacing. <laughs> I think the uh, music is pretty menacing as well. Dun, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a badass song, man. Yeah. And uh, lots of cool jumps and stuff. It's not just springs. There's also like uh, some points that you have to kind of dodge. I never felt like so threatened in this stage. Yeah. How did you feel playing it? It doesn't. It it has the themes, but it doesn't like challenge wise. It doesn't feel like the last Sonic stage. Mm. You know, because and maybe that's just like where I've been kicked and abused by Sonic Two. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, I don't know. It's just you know, it doesn't feel like, and I this obviously doesn't stand up to the final stage of Knuckles, whatever the hell that was called. Because um, that, that oh, Titanic was no, that no, 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 no. That that's Mania. Um, oh, gosh, I can't remember. Anyway, the one like the rings and stuff. I th well, it, I think it's just Death Egg, right? Yeah, I think Something it's like Death Egg. I may be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. But okay. that that one, that stage is awesome for a final stage. Yeah. So this doesn't stand up to that, but it's definitely not as been, like as annoying as Metropolis Zone, and I would, I would say I like it better than Scrap Brain. Hmm. Well, Metropolis is not it's not the last one, right? Because then you uh, have well, uh, the airship zone. It's close enough. <laughs> I consider it the last zone. They're, oh, because of the themes. I see. Yeah. Well, this is better than Metropolis. I much prefer this this more playable kind of uh, level than the one in Metropolis. I do wish it was a bit more challenging. Um, I wish it kind of had some of the challenges Scrap Brain. I've come to appreciate Scrap Brain a little more. Um, but, I mean, still some cool concepts and ones that are brought back. You know that little uh, double leg thing and you jump on one side of the leg and it, it moves the rest? Yeah. Uh, they, they bring that back in... Uh, yeah, Mania. In Mania. They do some cool shit, Mania, with like some of this stuff that like was barely utilized mm -hmm. in some of the other Sonic games. So, like you said, I think the, the concept is there. I just don't know. Um, is it executed in a way that is, you know? I think it's still a fun zone. The Tiny Sonic is a nice surprise. Um, it still does have some challenge. I know there's a parts you can go in and out of the like the, the foreground and background of the little gate. 
Um, mm. That that's a neat little effect. Yeah, I agree. I think it's uh it's pretty sincere. And then uh, you know, once you make your way through that, you're at the boss. Uh, Eggman was like, you know, I think I might want to put up like a little bit of a fight <laughs> at some point. And <laughs> he'll put up the fight before you even get there. You got to do some crazy platforming to get there. Oh yeah, you sure do. There's a couple annoying segments, like you have to run across the the spinning platforms, which can drop you into the abyss. Um, but you also have to time it with a pillar that comes down, and you can die frequently. It's a good thing that there's a one-up in the top left corner of the screen as you start the uh, level. So if you need that uh, handicap, it's there. Uh, once you get through that section, Eggman secludes off uh, a couple of these lightning bug enemies, which we kind of didn't... I don't think they were there in Stardust Speedway, but they bring them back in Mania. Interesting. Anyways, uh, I did not like those little lightning bugs. Do you remember them? Yeah, and they spin around, and you have to like hit them at a certain time. Yeah, it's the timing that yeah, you have the to timing hit them. Is very off. Yeah, it was it was something strange about that, like the hitbox, and the, there's two of them. You can get through it as long as you have a couple rings. You can keep getting them, and then there's a couple rings when you start the next bit. And then Eggman is not here to play. He's got four boxes, and he spins them around his way. Yeah. <laughs> he. This is one of the only times that he technically kind of fights back in this game. <laughs> yeah, this one was a throwaway to me. I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was, it's easy. It's so easy. <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't know. It wasn't like too dramatic. It's just like, oh, you know, hit him, get your rings back, because he, he hits you, and then hit him again, hit him again. F filler egg, man. Filler egg. Um, but you beat him, and there you go. If you if you got all of the, uh, if you went to the pass on every stage and got all the robot generators, you got the the good ending. Or if you get all the chaos emeralds. No, they're not. They're time stones. Time stones. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the good ending, Teddy? Um, the good ending is Sonic saves the day and the world is at peace. And then uh, something explodes and it makes Sonic's face in fireworks. And him and Amy are good to go. And then the, at the end of the credit sequence, it says, "You're too cool." <laughs> the bad ending's kind of better, isn't it? Yeah, I watched the bad ending the first time that I played it. I was like, "Is this a bad ending?" Because I know there's multiple endings, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, the yeah the bad ending has Amy in the middle. I don't know why she was she was she was there. But she's in the middle of the the dilapidated, I don't know, like the stage. It's like falling apart, his base or whatever. So Sonic picks her up and he he runs down and carries her off little planet, which has been set free and flies back into the sky. I love when he sets Amy down because she's like, oh, she, you know, like she has her eyes covered. And Sonic set, you know, sits her down gently and then he kind of like backs away then runs off you know like like before she gets the chance to like hug him or anything <laughs> sonic picks up a pebble tries to throw it at eggman oh you know yeah eggman was like oh i still have this time stone Aha! and then like sonic picks up a pebble chucks it at eggman and he explodes until like a cloud looks like eggman <laughs> it's the a world is imploding you can see the life stream <laughs> it's a very it's a very cool ending but just, very final fantasy but little planet has been saved kind of i don't that should have been a good ending yeah i think it should have been more dramatic i wasn't so impressed with the good ending it might as well have been just like you know what's the end of the good ending of sonic one it's like sonic comes and he's like great yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you um see the other little animated cutscenes? um oh in between in the credit sequence yes where like it shows i didn't sonic notice where their differences Oh, where, where Sonic's like going through like the stages and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I He's fighting some of the enemy units. Yeah, he fights some of the like the enemies, and there's the. It even shows the race against Metal Sonic at one point. There's very, mm. very, very cool animated segments that um, that that movie that I was talking about, the the OVA, uh, the same animation studio that did this made that. So, this is definitely them showing, hey, we're on the Sega CD. 
Oh yeah, FMV, which they look worse on the Sega CD because <laughs> they're very boxed in. It's like a box in like the middle of the screen instead of you know looking nice, and it looked kind of fuzzy and stuff on the Sega CD version. Um, awesome animation, though. I think it holds up really well. Oh, dude, before I even played this game, uh, that that intro animation, I used to watch that thing all the time on the internet. And I think even at one point, uh, whenever I was little, my parents had a Sega Saturn, and they had Sonic Jam. And you could watch um, little things from like other Sonic games, and they even had that little animated intro, and I used to watch that all the time, too. Um, so, when I first played this game, I was like, that's what this is from? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've seen that little animated intro all my entire life. <laughs> mm. It's such a neat little thing. Holds up really well. So. Sonic CD, Teddy. We did it. Yeah, that's the classics. Yeah, well, the main series. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um... What are your overall thoughts on CD? I know going into it, you... Just from us talking, I know going into it, you were a little iffy about it. A uh, very steep learning curve, and you gotta have the right access for it. Because I don't have a PC gaming setup, it was a bit challenging to experience, especially because I wanted to get the good ending, and I found the time stones really hard to get with the bonus stages. As much as I like the concept of the bonus stages, uh, they deduct time from your time limit every time you step in the water. For some reason, the developers always want to punish Sonic with water, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I had the walkthrough playing on my phone, and I played it on Steam, and yeah, it worked out. So I appreciated getting to play it to map it out especially before we do mania i thought it was really important that we do this before mania and you did too um so i'm glad we agree there i appreciate the game and in some respects i i'm interested to see like how you think it holds up amongst the other uh classic sonic tiles namely the ones on the genesis um it's and that's just probably due to having less exposure because i played the other games more it is my least favorite of the main um, titles, you know, like the the classic titles at least. Um, but I think it holds up okay. I think the the time system is a little convoluted, and if you know, once again, if you go into it just like, oh, I, I you know, I like Sonic Two, I like Sonic One, I'm gonna play this game, you're probably gonna have a bad time. You, you in some respects, I actually appreciate that it's so different, though. No, me, me too. I do like the fact that it was trying to have its own identity. It was trying a new concept on a new console. Uh, <laughs> so I I don't hate it for that. I just think that the the enjoyability of like going back and playing it um, through the years where, I've, where I have gone back and played it has been less than, say, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, even Sonic 1. Um you know, it just doesn't it doesn't stack up when it comes to that. But I think it has unique ideas, unique level designs, crazy ass colors, um, a really wacky you know sense of like you know just like movement and, and you know like a, a verticality on some of the stages. Agree. Um, I think part of it's due to access to. It's just really not accessible uh, for the most part unless you are a PC gamer. Um, I think the map is largely inoffensive, but uh, to counter that, it's also n not particularly exciting for the bulk of it. Oh no! Unlike every, almost every other game we've talked about in this series, I don't think there's been a stage in this game that we just didn't like. So like, like straight up, we were like, "This is bad," right? Quartz Quadrant is probably just a okay, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like there, there wasn't. A, a labyrinth zone there wasn't a um a um what's the uh, metropolis there wasn't was there one in three we didn't like the last one the last one in three launch base there wasn't a i don't know what knuckles had um i don't think knuckles was that bad no though. no knuckles didn't have anything we didn't like i don't believe um but still you know it didn't have those like crazy in it crazy offensive stages that we were like oh fuck this state you know fuck labyrinth zone oh, you know. The, the worst thing in sonic and knuckles was uh lava reef debatably like as we saw it 
Um, and I think this one is kind of similar. It's just some of the stages feel plain. And I think it's part of a problem with the game design. Not a problem per se, but just their choices uh, to make it more vertical based and exploration based as opposed to speed based. Uh, it did fe it did feel slow at certain times, um, but I was always excited to see what was next and to experience it and a couple of them I'm interested to like try again and like try and play them better namely Stardust Speedway and Wacky Workbench interestingly enough Do you recommend CD? Sure to anyone who's interested in the 2D Sonic titles and is interested in Sonic CD, you should try it. It's not the best game. Um, I don't think it's the worst game, personally. Um, but it's, I still recommend it, especially like things like Soundtrack. We've talked about Sonic R before and like almost like just play that for the soundtrack. This is very similar. Oh, and I, it, I it really like two. two <laughs> yeah, exactly. The options. And they're both good. They're both good soundtracks. So, yeah, they're, but that's, that's probably the best thing about this game also is the fact that the soundtracks are so damn good. The soundtracks, the FMVs, those are super cool. I like how it opens and closes with one. Uh, like the character lore, the Amy Adams, the Metal Sonic. There's some uh, the Metal Sonic boss. What do you keep I mean, calling her down. Amy Adams? <laughs> What's her name? A Amy Rose. Amy Rose. I thought she was Amy Adams. No, Who's Amy Adams? I don't know who Amy Adams is. <laughs> oh, she's the Spider Man girl, isn't she? It's, I don't know. Anyway, a Amy Rose is the Sonic character. Uh, <laughs> Oh my god, Amy, Amy Adams is a comedian. What am I you saying? You were saying Amy Adams earlier. I thought you were making a joke, but you did it again, and I'm like, does he really think it's Amy Adams? <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people are, are surprised to find out that um, Amy was uh, this like was this early on in the Sonic franchise, you know? Because yeah. most people know her from her like adventure roots. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and she was in this game. She was in Sonic R. You know, she's in some of the Game Gear titles. Um, I want to I want to give you a fun fact, and, and I think this fun fact will make you smile, Teddy. So you know the FMV in the intro. There's like a scene where it looks like Sonic has like the sniffles for a second. He's like kind of like rubs his nose for a minute. And he like looks up, you know. Um, there's there's an unused sprites in this game. It's a true story where Sonic would have sneezed. This, I just want you to know that <laughs> Un, unused Sonic sneezing sprites in the in Sonic wait so like maybe like if he was like say not running like if he yes, just stood still yeah, for if it 15 stood seconds still, there would have been a sprite where Sonic sneezed I guess he had a cold that day what is it as it is I don't I don't, I don't know I know this one does the thing that if you um, wait nine minutes Sonic will just say I'm out of here and he'll jump off the stage uh, that's where that one came from. Yeah, he's like, I'm out of here. So, you know, he jumps off. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know why, but they cut a sprite of Sonic sneezing. Good bless him. <laughs> uh, also, another fun fact is um, Christian Whitehead, whenever he was doing the 2011 version, he was going to add two more zones. He was going to add a Western theme zone and then a final, like a new final boss called like uh something like i forget it was something fever i forget what it's called like column fever frantic fever i don't know but um it was a giant egg man but the western zone i forget the, the original name of it but it became mirage saloon in a little game we call mania yeah so that's neat <laughs> i can see it now the mirage if you're a strong you can't fly. <laughs> you can reach the other side. Oh, the rainbow. Sonic boom. Sonic boom. I, I need the reason for our boom. For our boom. <laughs> I used to have um, this CD, and I told you this before, but I, I want to say it on the episode. I used to have this CD as a kid that was... Um, it was Sonic CD? It was called Sonic the Hedgehog Boom. And it was um, mainly music from the U.S. Sonic CD soundtrack, along with a couple songs from Sonic Spinball, recreated in, like, high definition. And I used to listen to that all the time. So I have, like, ties to the soundtrack even before I even played the game. Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom! <laughs> 
<laughs> Sonic boom! <laughs> Sonic, big Sonic boom! <laughs> Sonic boom! So, boom. what's what's next on the Sonic agenda, Teddy? Well, we have Mania. Because <gasps> we're Maniacs. Maniacs. We might have a guest. Oh my god, special guest. For the first time in Sonic Map Out history. A person that's never been on a Sonic Map Out before. The first time. Sonic Mania. He better not live us down. No, I'm really looking forward to this guest and his experiences with Sonic. I can't wait to talk about Sonic Mania. Me too. That game's um, amazing. And then we also want to do the Game Gear titles. Personally, I want to do Advance. I just need a better... I need a good way to play it. Advance? Advance. What, you on the Game Boy? No. I have a Game Boy player. Like, well, yeah, but you're talking about Sonic Advance on the Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Oh, okay. I... I, I I don't think you've told me this outside of this episode. I had no clue that you had an interest in playing that yet. Yeah, I do. And, it, I do. and there's three of those. Yeah. And those... They, should, they really need to bring those back. I don't see those anywhere. Yeah, well, and those led into the Sonic Rush games, too. Those kind of like the same subset. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. They, they don't do those modern 2D Sonic games anymore. I guess since... You know, I, mean, I guess they really need to because Mania is a thing now. But, um, cool. I'll be down to do Sonic Advance, man. I'm always down to do anything Sonic. You could be like, dude, let's do Sonic and the Black Knight. I'd be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Sonic and the Secret Ring. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Sonic 4, Episode 1. Let's do it. It's only four stages. S- Sonic Forces. Let's go. Sonic Boom. Rise oh. of Lyric. You know what? <laughs> you know what? If you send me a copy, I'll do it. <laughs> but I'm not buying it. <laughs> that didn't sound like fuck yeah to me. <laughs> I haven't played that. That's like one of the only Sonic games that I've never touched. Probably for better. I haven't touched the 3DS Boom games. I heard they're better, though. They're a thing? They exist. I mean, I'll even do Sonic Rivals on the PSP. Okay. I'll even do Sonic Labyrinth on the Game Gear. Did you say Labyrinth Zone? No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sonic RPG for the Nintendo DS. Hi, I'm Sonic. And I'm part of the Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> There's this amazing moment in the Sonic um, OVA where Sonic and Metal Sonic are going like head-to-head at full speed and they're not moving. And um, Sonic goes, I know everything you're going to do, but that can't help you because... Uh, you know everything I'm going to do. Strange, isn't it? <laughs> and it just keeps. Yeah, it's. I think I got the line wrong. I, th- I think I got the line backwards. But it's an amazing. It's an amazing cinematic moment. All right, you heard it here first. I'm going to send you the clip. Maybe you could put it in the episode at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a good way to go out. All right, uh, Sonic Boom. Doot Doot Sonic Warrior Doot Doot Sonic Doot Sonic Boom Doot Doot Sonic Boom Doot Doot I want to know like what was going through Sega's mind <laughs> They were like okay We have the new game We have an opening intro sequence with music Oh what's the music? Well it's called You Can Do Anything And it goes Doot Doot Sonic Warrior Doot Doot Sonic Warrior <laughs> And um, Sega was like N- No we can't have that in America, okay? That's way... Okay, no, we need a bunch of women going, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, because that's way, way more badass. He's the reason for our boom. <laughs> that's not how the song goes. He's the reason for our boom. <laughs> <laughs> He's the reason for our boom. <laughs> if Sonic had a boom... What would it sound like? <laughs> the rise of lyric. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sonic. Hi, I'm Boom. <laughs> and together Hi, we I'm Metal will Sonic. be 
Sonic Boom, I am Metal Sonic, Sonic Boom. Enter in the living room. Well, chili dogs. Gotta go fast. What would if Metal Sonic was singing Sonic Boom? Sonic Boom, sound? Sonic Boom. He's the reason for our boob. Going to help you since I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? Yeah!